All right, so this is the fourth video pertaining to day four of the 10-day lectures for NZ. And this is going to be between 8 and 9 in the evening. And this pertains to the last two parts of the speaking uh, input. Now, presumably, the first part was given during day, day two of the lectures uh, that's also towards the end and so day four is a continuation of the same input covering the last two of the three parts of the speaking test of the IELTS and so what's going to happen is that you uh, will share with them some overview first about what's going to happen in part two so you flash slide number 20 and in this slide the students will be given an overview of what to expect in part two. So basically you start by saying that part two is going to be a talk about a topic. Uh, normally it is about um, a place they've been to, a person they've met, uh, some event they've attended, so something about their past, or it could be something about the present also, like a hobby they're performing, a TV show they're watching, or perhaps a course they're engaged in or it could be also about the future like a future travel plan their dream house uh, a dream travel for example or a place they want to go to that they haven't been there yet uh, so those are possibilities and uh, please emphasize that uh, part two is very very important because the real speaking test occurs in part two and that is because they'll be given some time to speak about this topic for two minutes and therefore uh, they have to be able to showcase their fluency here now in the next slide you show to them an example of what the topic card would look like and emphasize that there are actually four prompts or four guide questions that they have to be able to answer in the whole two minutes so for example in this slide the topic is all about an admirable person and down below are the four key points now, emphasize also that the way in which part two is done is that they are supposed to perform a note-taking activity for one minute, and after that, they have to deliver their answer about this topic for two minutes. Now, basically the point of part two is to test their ability to deliver a story and also how to organize this story in a logical, orderly fashion. So it's important, therefore, that the students know crucial skills in part two, and your job as a teacher will be to teach them these crucial skills. So there are actually two things that you're supposed to show them. Um, in this case, uh, there are actually two main skills, and these are number one, the note-taking, and second, the development of the answer the delivery specifically so these two points number one no taking second delivery are the key skills they have to perform so therefore the the majority of the lecture will be devoted to these key skills and you might want to write those two words or those two expressions on the board no taking number one and number two delivery of answer so that they are able to appreciate visually the two key skills they have to do well now from there you move on to uh, a sample topic okay so talk about a wild animal that you find interesting and you will be using this questionnaire as a jumping board for uh, the note-taking skill now on a whiteboard uh, you can show to them how typically students would write their notes and here is an example of how it's going to look like. Now what you can do is, you know, write them down on the board and then emphasize that while this may be uh, a common uh, way students do it, in some occasions this kind of note-taking would not work because simply writing down the answers to the keywords would actually be working uh, against the examinee because sometimes when they have to 
use those notes and when the examiner takes back the questionnaire they couldn't figure out exactly what these words represent that is because they just only get the answers they don't have the keywords to the question and so unless the students have sharp photographic memory this kind of note taking is something that we would not encourage them to do so instead of writing down the answers on the on the, the piece of paper they are given uh, you recommended them therefore a different way in which you can do that and that is be, and that's by I mean simply writing down the keywords first from the question and then thereafter write the answers adjacent to typically to the right of these keywords uh, as their notes so here is an example of how you would use this method as an illustration so basically uh, since you are the teacher your job here is to visually show them how it's going to be done uh, and since you are a teacher your role is to model in front of them so board work is really important here so kindly use this particular image as your guide on how you can do it yourself eventually right now since you've showed it to them how it's done you may now let them give it a try around three times so their book has some some blank pages um, right after some some text so you can direct them to these uh, blank pages or you can ask them to take out a blank sheet of paper and divide this paper into three equal parts okay and what you do is you tell them that you're going to flash three topics and that you will be timing them for one minute and see if they're able to apply that note-taking technique that you shared with them earlier okay so from there you let them prepare first uh, let them get some paper and of course some pen so they can begin writing and then from there you flash this first question now uh, I'd like you to read only the, the heading and then you flash this afterwards and then once you flash this you let them write their notes for one minute you, of course you you observe the time and once it's done you close off the projector you don't have to turn off the projector you just slide it slide it to off uh, to cover I mean the lens and then you let them stop writing and then you ask them to check their notes whether they're sufficient whether they can manage talking using those notes and uh, normally in the first round students don't get it yet some would uh, so you can examine their notes if you will because there are only like few of them uh, you can always check their notes one by one uh, or uh, you can just ask their partners to check their papers for them now before you move on to the second round uh, let the examinees know that another bit of information they have to write will be the tense of the verb and that is because grammatically speaking it is the verb tense in which most students don't get the grammar right in part two so for example in this example in, in this question I mean uh, it's all about a child that they know hence the present verb tense should be used for the most part of the talk so just show to them again on the board uh, using the, the notes you have written previously you write the verb tense present past or future at the top right corner of your notes so they can see how and where it should be done all right so that's the first now you let them you, you direct them uh, I mean to the second uh, part of their paper so they can prepare for the second topic so once they're ready you flash this one you could say in this part I'd like you guys to talk about a thing that you forgot doing you now have one minute to prepare for your notes you can start you can start making your notes now so once you've done that then I'll write and then after one minute again you cover the projector or you close off the projector and then you ask them again the same question and you ask them whether they did better this time 
uh, what parts they found difficulty in. You can even you can even illustrate to them how you would make notes for this topic. Even for the first round earlier, for this topic about a child, you know, uh, before you move on to the second question like this, uh, you can also show them how you would make your notes yourself. Just again, to show a model, just an example of how you do it. And from there, you ask them what verb tense they have to use. And the answer should be past. And then, in many instances, like in the past, um, many students would have better notes at this time. So you congratulate them and then let them know that there's going to be one more try. And once they're ready, you flash again the third topic. And then you can now conclude this part of note-taking uh, afterwards. Okay? So that's how it's going to be like. Now, uh, you now put a check mark on note-taking that you have written on the board so that uh, you can now segue to the second more important part of your discussion which is the delivery of the answer. Now you might want to flash uh, this uh, question over here as a jumping board to your second half of discussion. Now you need to tell them that the key to a really good delivery in which the whole two minutes is used up is that they have to volunteer ideas. You have to let them know that they cannot content them themselves with just a one sentence answer for each of the questions here, otherwise they will be producing a very short answer. So emphasize that they need to be able to really develop the story by giving out at least two to three key ideas for each of the prompts. Um, and that's the only way they should be able to use up the whole two minutes. Um, emphasize also that the students are better off being stopped in the middle of their interview than actually being encouraged by the examiner to talk more because they, they spoke for less than two minutes in this part of the test. So the longer the answer, the better therefore they should be sounding in this test. However, uh, you have to model in front of them an answer, a typical answer for a part two topic. And so what you now do is show to them the follow-up slides on how this particular question is answered. So direct them to the first question. So the first question is where you went. This is how they can start their answer. You can say it to them. So in the slide are some useful expressions they can use to start their topic because in the past, many students have had it uh, difficult how to start their talk. So let them know that they don't need, uh, you know, bit around the bush kind of statements. They just need to go straight. To what they're supposed to deliver. So for example, you could direct them to the first line that says, I'd like to share with you this journey that took so long, it was so memorable. And then you could let them know that they can also use the words, I'd like to share with you, or let me share with you, or this last phrase at this juncture, I'd like to talk about, and then of course the given topic. So it can be as simple and as direct as that. You let them know that. They don't need to give a lengthy introduction because they only have two minutes. Now, soon after this, you give the full answer to the question. So for the first question, where they went, you show this one to them. Now, what you can do is read this for them. You just let them know to follow after you. And once you're done reading everything, you point to them the, you point to them the bits of information that were given as, as, as a response to this topic. So if you notice, the question is only where they went or where he went, but beyond the mention of the place Kamigin, there was also a mention as to who traveled, my friends and I, what they used for traveling, a small car, how long they traveled, close to half a day, which exactly is the spot they went to, the port. And again, there's another reference to the, the amount of time they travel from the port to the island. So this is just to illustrate that the key to giving out a really lengthy answer 
would be to provide more details than what's required by the topic. Now, to illustrate it further, the next slide will show you uh, when they went. So, in this case, there is a reference to not only the year, but also the month, the specific time it was the length, and how long this particular vacation was. So, again, you read this. And then uh, the other question was what you did and saw. Uh, this is the slide showing what they did. So, again, you read everything. And then you point to the underlined parts indicating what they did. There are actually at least four things that they did while on travel. And in this next slide, you show them what they saw in this trip. So again, you read, and after reading, you again highlight that the things they saw were the landscapes and the seascape. And then the last item here <clears throat> is the final question, how you felt. So again, you read this part over here, and then after uh, reading everything, you tell them that if this were spoken, uh, in, in reality, this is already two minutes altogether. So by showing to them these slides, they should have an idea as to the amount of information they share and how they should be doing it. Now, at this point, the students should be about ready to now try answering a part two topic themselves. But before you do that, uh, I'd like you to first show a couple of slides to them so they have an idea about how the second part is going to be. So you let them see or show to them, I mean, this slide over here, which is the topic of the speaker in the video you're about to show them. So there'll be a video presentation here. It's a very short video. It's about three and a half minutes long. And that'll be your jumping board for the actual speaking pair activity. So this is how the, te the text is going to be like. So you read it to them. And then you give them a preview about the video, that the video is with a gentleman from Italy and that this is how he performed his talk. So this is the video, and you'll, you, you'll play the video for I'm them. Give you a topic. Like and, once, and once you are done <clears throat> with this video, please study the video, of course, you now tell them that <clears throat> they are going to act as an examiner and an interviewer at the same time. Okay, So they would know what to say during the interview, uh, you show to them these uh, notes, this, 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 this dialogue that they will use. <clears throat> but before you show this to them, <clears throat> before you show to them this slide, uh, actually even before you show the video, uh, I'd like you to pair the students with a partner. Now, if they are even, well and good. If they are not even, uh, then you, the teacher, have to be able to partner up with uh, one student. So you are going to act as the examiner and they, the interviewee. So you let them choose their partner or it's your prerogative to choose um, the, the, the student's pairs or partners. And after that, you let them decide who is going to be student number one and who is going to be student number two. So they will talk about it. Now, I'd like you to also hand them over the questionnaire, uh, which is in a separate email uh, that comes together with you know this video. Uh, it's a paper uh, with two topics side by side. It's uh, it's two topics altogether, and you hand this over to each pair, and you let each pair cut the, the paper in half lengthwise and each student will get one half each so one half will be set number one the other half will be set number two so you let the students know to get their assigned half set one or set two now after you have paired them after you have um, let them get their half of the questionnaire you let them know that whoever is student number one will be the first interviewer, which means whoever is student number two 
we'll be answering questions that come from student number one. Of course, the questionnaire is within their hands already, so let them know also that they cannot preview the questions ahead of time. They have to surprise each other. Okay, so they wouldn't really know what the part two topics are going to be. So there will actually be two rounds. So therefore, there's a set 1A and set 1B, or topic A, topic B. Now, the first student will be using the dialogue over here. So you guide them, you guide them before they start their interview sessions together. Uh, you let them know that at the beginning, they have to use the first dialogue here. I'd like you to talk about the topic. And then they say you have one minute to prepare your notes. You can start making your notes now. Then after that, student number two will write down notes. Uh, they can write their notes at the back of the paper that they have. And then the student number one will set the timer for one minute. And after one minute, they now tell their pair to start talking using dialogue, the second dialogue here in the middle. And then once uh, the student starts talking, student number two starts talking, they have to start the two-minute timer. And of course, they have to let their pair know, student number one meaning, that their two minutes is up by simply saying thank you while raising their hand to signal their pair to stop. Now once that's done, they shift, they switch, they, they switch roles. Student number two now will be the interviewer and student number one now will become the interviewee. So the same process will be observed and once one set is done, they switch roles again to cater to topic number two. And this particular uh, activity should run for about 15 to 17 minutes. Uh, in most instances, 15 minutes will do. So if you allot, say, uh, three minutes uh, each round or each way, so since there are four topics, that's three times four, that's 15 minutes, that's a lot of time actually. So 15 minutes will usually do. And uh, you observe the students do this, and you can even comment in the middle if there are indeed some issues as regards how the interviews go. Okay, so your job as a teacher is to basically guide them, facilitate them, correct if need be, and of course you have to observe because right after, you know, all the four topics have been asked, you have to give your general comments about how the students perform, uh, observations on how they make notes and how they answer the questions. So it's really up to you, teacher, how or what points would you like to mention at the end of this discussion? So this part of the speaking discussion should last for about uh, 40 to 50 minutes, okay? And that's because uh, for speaking part three, uh, let me minimize these slides here, okay, speaking part three, uh, you basically direct the students uh, to go to well, before, before part three, I mean, uh, as a way to conclude, by the way, this part two, you direct them to pages 41 up until 44 for more examples of part two answers. Uh, page 41 up until 44 actually shows them a total of eight additional answers, eight more topics um, that they can glean from and hopefully by letting them read these examples they should be able to appreciate how they should be able to deliver their part two now emphasize to them that this this is very important because the day after day five they should be able to perform this in an actual test setup okay and part two is of course um, something that they will be going through themselves eventually all right so uh once this part is done you let them know that the last part, this should be about the last 10 to 15 minutes of your one hour. Um, you just let them know that the third part is the extended discourse. Now, emphasize that the extended discourse is basically an extension of what they talked about in part two. So, for example, um, if the topic in part two is an admirable person they would like to meet, then 
highly likely that the kinds of questions they will be answering in part three will be all about people we admire. However, the kinds of questions here can be a little more challenging. And so these speech functions found on pages 45 up until 48 uh, are their guides on how they can answer the most common kinds of questions. Now, briefly, you can just let them know that there are four other speech functions they have to deliver. Uh, speech function number seven is all about enumerating the advantages and the disadvantages. And each page actually has some guidelines on what they should do and some examples found at the bottom over here. Uh, accompanying these tips over here and the, the example at the bottom, you also have some useful expressions found just on the right of each page. So you, you direct them to these tips because eventually uh, you will not be able to cover this one by one. So you will just have to let them know that they have to study these speech functions on their own and that eventually this will be reinforced in the subsequent uh, discussions, uh, more particularly during the final inputs that will happen next week or the following week. Now, uh, you can just briefly direct them to speech function number eight again, comparing and contrasting, again, the structure, expressions, and then the example at the bottom. Uh, you can also direct them to the expressing of opinions. Uh, speech function number nine, you can let them know that principally what speech function number nine is, is very similar to what they did in the case of the yes-no question, which is speech function number four during their day one lecture. So again, just like uh, in the previous two speech functions, we have here some useful expressions, uh, a structure for their answer, and of course, a sample at the bottom. And then finally, page 48 is speculating. Uh, tell them what speculating is. Uh, basically, the purpose of speculating is to make a guess about the future. So we, that, we let them know, therefore, that to start answering this question, they principally have to just express their level of certainty. And so again, just like in the previous speech functions, there are a couple of useful expressions they can use here uh, when they have to uh, answer, to start answering this kind of question. And then thereafter, they have to explain or support their view by using some trends. And down below again is another example. All right. So from there, you, you may end the discussion. So part three speaking is principally just an overview. Uh, you just let them, or you just direct them, I mean, to the notes that are there on pages 45 to 48 because everything is quite self-explanatory. Um, we cannot possibly spoon feed everything to them, you know, in a classroom. We also provide them some leeway to be able to learn more independently using, of course, the notes that are there in the book, All right? So that should fill in the last hour of your uh, lecture. And uh, you bid them goodbye and wish them luck for the test that will follow, and that's the day after. And then remind them again, uh, don't forget to, to remind them that the coverage for uh, for the speaking test that will follow will be covering a particular month in their compilation. Please refer to the revised schedule for the specific month that they will have to uh, study in preparation for the next day's speaking test. Okay, so that should be about it. And I, I hope that this guide uh, helps you how to prepare for everything. Okay. Bye.